The Rotary Grants Committee is a, a subset of a Rotary activity that involves using discretionary funds that the Rotary Club has available and which are used to support a variety of community interests or needs or e emerging challenges. The Rotary funds that are used by the Grants Committee come from sources such as fundraisers, uh, some well-known ones uh, among Rotary members here in Muskegon are the Grape Escape event annually, parties in the park, and the Rotary uh, Club also has an endowment uh, that has been built over time and held at the Community Foundation for Muskegon County. We have been quite active this past year and a half during the COVID period with food trucks that we have brought to certain areas of the communities where there is a need for food support and, and where there is a food insecurity. Rotary has a website and on the website is an area called Grants where nonprofit organizations may apply following a protocol, a, a set of instructions that are on the website if they would like to apply for financial support to help launch a new project or perhaps request support for special project of, of significance to the community. This fund was established in 1991 when the Rotary Club at one time owned Camp Emory up on Big Blue Lake and it was sold and the proceeds from that sale were invested in the community foundation in the Rotor Muskegon Rotary Community Fund. And the assets that we gain each year from the investment is what is used then for grants. We usually have, oh, maybe three to six or eight applicants per year. Those are reviewed by the grants committee and if they fit our guidelines and if we have the money, we are delighted to award grants. Now we did decide a few years ago, a, a very large committee of uh, interested Rotarians got together and talked about this and what we wanted to fund. And we decided at that time, rather than dribble it out in hundreds of dollars, we wanted to make grants that would be meaningful for the community. And we have done that. We have made some pretty significant grants over the years. In fact, since 91, I have some numbers because they are important. We have made $472,000 in grants, which um, for investing in this community is, is, as I said, that's pretty significant. Some examples that we've done, we we helped with the paver project in Hackley Park with the pavers. And then following that, we helped with the renovation of the statues there. And those were big, very big grants. But as we said, they make a difference in the community. We have helped with the Rotary, uh, the YMCA Rotary Camp project a number of years ago. The Hackley stage that was built by the Party on the Park Committee a few years ago received a good sized grant from us. And for the past two years, because of the COVID issue and the need for food, we have invested each year into the Feeding America food truck program. And as my husband says, I'd love to give away money. So for me, it's enjoyable to be able to help somebody in need, and that's what we do. The Rotary Program Committee does a really great job paying attention to what's going on in the community and bringing those aspects into the club by presenting them as programs. 
We receive recommendations from other individuals within the club and we also really look at finding a balance between informing people about important projects that are happening in the community, whether it's economic development related um, or entrepreneurship, nonprofit organizations. And we also try to balance that with what's going on in Rotary International and within our club as well. While definitely the challenge has been operating a program committee in the middle of a pandemic when we went from being all in person to having to pivot and go virtual through Zoom. It took a lot of additional and extra work and innovative approaches to look at how we implemented those programs and really what was timely and of the essence of what should be talking about. I think that our program committee has done a really great job highlighting individuals in our community that are doing some excellent work and really paying attention to diversity, equity, and inclusion, and really trying to highlight individuals in our community that are doing everything that they can to try to be more inclusive and more aware of how to engage individuals from diverse backgrounds. It's been a pleasure working between the two committees to develop programs that are really representative of the, the mission of the DEI committee. I think that having a hybrid club has been really beneficial to engaging members more. I think that not everyone can get away every single week for an hour, hour and a half, but if they can join us through Zoom even for a half an hour or so, that allows them to continue to stay engaged with us. So I don't know where we go from here and what lessons that we've learned that we would want to replicate or do differently. It definitely is more time consuming in planning and implementation by producing these amazing videos and the panel discussions, but I think the panel discussions have especially had more breadth and depth to them than an individual just coming and talking and presenting for 15 to 20 minutes. Our future, I think, is exciting. I believe that what we have done is pulled forward or accelerated what we can use as our framework for delivering programs. I think we were forced to be able to, to record programs and provide things virtually, which opened our eyes and opened our perspective as to how we provide uh, great programming in a, a variety of fashions. We can record programs which can be shown uh, at a later time. We can record programs that will enable us to bring people in that we wouldn't otherwise have had the opportunity to speak to us. Uh, people that are limited by time, people that are limited by distance. So we plan to and we are being able to give people the opportunity to either view our programs virtually over Zoom or be able to do them live and fortunately we're able to do that at the same time. Well, it's a consequence because I think we continue to engage our members wherever they are. And I think it's important for folks to know that we are very receptive to ideas and we're looking for ideas for for program uh, presentations and topics. We will work to try and, and bring these forward and that we will continue to, to be diligent in, in addressing what people think are the, among the most important topics that we should be uh, talking about. I would say that youth leadership is our ability as Rotarians to reach down to those that are going to be the next in the future of Rotary. Well, it starts in elementary school, and then we have programs that also go through high school for students that allow students to gain leadership, to learn about Rotary, while also giving back to the community, which is also something very important, I think, in any leader that we want to develop, is that sense that they need to give back. 
We also talk about life leadership, which in and of itself builds our leaders. And life leadership gives the opportunity for schools to give us the names of individuals that they feel are going to be best served by this and would basically be able to come back after attending our life leadership conference to give that knowledge back to their schools and to create that leadership environment in their local schools. And so life leadership sends them off for a time period where they are with people that they don't know from youths all across our um, district, basically, and, and that includes Canada having the opportunity to actually learn from some experts that come in and give us a really quality presentations, um, learning what it takes to be a leader, what leadership looks like, how to deal with things that um, sometimes come up in their schools or in their youth sports and things like that, which are conflicts. How do you resolve those things? How do you get people to be engaged? All of those very important aspects of creating leadership, as well as learning to speak in front of people. Sometimes that's one of the hardest things for you is to gain that confidence for public speaking. But you get those opportunities, problem solving, conflict resolution, things that leadership is really all about if you're going to be effective. And they learn those things over a period of time, away at a camp, they come back into their schools, they come back to Rotary and tell us about that experience. And hopefully back into their schools, they're really changing the dynamic based on the things that they learn at the Life Leadership Conference. And we interview and, and seek candidates to interview from every high school in the county except for Montague and Whitehall, which are attended to by the Montague Whitehall Club. We recruit as many fellow Rotarians as want to sit in on interviews. I do most of the legwork with the schools, getting the candidates and kind of vetting them. We call them, talk to them. We go there in person, oftentimes to the school, and we meet with the counselor or the principal or, or whomever. Uh, but we meet with the student and talk about the conference, talk about why we are doing this, and, and we look to see if they're interested. Uh, they've already been nominated, right? So um, we look for uh, fellow Rotarians who don't mind doing things like that and going out to the high schools to recruit. Uh, joining me or joining Brianna uh, at our interviews, which are held in March. We interview all 12 or 13, depending on how many we send, 14 some years, around a big table, and we get about 10 or 15 Rotarians there so they can see the power that these these students have going on. I mean, it's it's a beautiful thing. Very uplifting to interview Every 10 minutes, we have a different student coming in, and we pop them questions from all quarters and um, just want them to, to know that we're serious, that if they're going to go, we're going to be spending you know, $375 each on them to send them to this conference. Uh, we want them to be excited, and we want to know that they're excited or we picked the wrong person. The point is, we require a report from the Muskegon students that we send. We want it either in writing, uh, a video, a slideshow, or want them to show up at a meeting and talk to us. Uh, I want to hear what happened. You know, Brianna does too. So now that we've got written reports, we're going to feed these on a trickle to the club over time, along with a photograph, so that they can see that and read. You know, it's not a long piece. It's usually four or five paragraphs. But in, in four or five paragraphs, when a kid pours it out and they're not BSing with you, you know, you can tell some wheels got turned because of the conference that we put together for them. I'm co-editor of the Rotary in Motion RIM newsletter with Susan Bestman. And I really enjoy working on the newsletter because I get to be a part of everything that's being communicated. I get to see what's going on things that I may miss or may not miss, and then try and find some creative outlet for me to be able to communicate that back to the rest of the Rotarians in Muskegon. The challenge is that we have to publish it every week, and thank goodness that we have an amazing team of reporters. It actually works amazing. We, we both have said to ourselves, we don't know how Bill did it for so long by himself. He, he approached both of us to be reporters, and to be honest, that was really a good way for me to 
make sure that my attendance was better because you can always find a reason to not go to the meetings. Oh, work this or this home thing, then and then you you give up. But when you have that commitment that you have to be there every couple of weeks, and and I think being part of a, a committee or a group pushes us to get there and know that we have to pull our weight. And Susan and I, we we trade seasons. She's busier in the summer, and I'm busier in the winter. And yet we both have that idea that we're all part of a team and whatever it takes to get it done will we'll help do that. We love having a big team. As you know, it's a big job to report <laughs> and, and thankfully we don't have to report every week. So what we're looking for, if you ever want to join RIM, <laughs> we will always take you. We're looking for enthusiastic reporters that are excited about getting that communication out every week. I joined the club in March of 2017. Kirk Hallman was my sponsor, and I really didn't know anything about Rotary until Kirk introduced me to it. It's, and I joined as a way to network and meet more people in the community. And shortly after I joined, I, I had a traumatic brain injury, so I was out for most of the summer, and that was in May, just a few months after I joined. So I was out for most of the rest of the year, not really able to be involved in things. By the time I got back, I was struggling to find a committee to join, and I didn't know what was available. I was having trouble finding where were, were there openings? What did I want to do? I really didn't know. And then when Bill Johansson approached me, I said, yeah, I think I can do that. And it was him reaching out and saying, look, we, we need you. We need somebody else. We need help with this. So my advice to new members would be, I. I I would like to do a better job of reaching out to them to say, here's what's available to you. We, we see your skills, we see your talents, we see where we can place you or where you might be. My fear was, oh, I might ask to be on a committee and they might say, oh, we have enough, we don't need any more. And, and then I would, oh, what would I do with myself? So yeah, Bill's approach and, and getting me and getting me involved was, he's so charming, you can't tell him no. And it was a, it was a good fit for me, so it worked out and I would like to see that benefit for other people too. I'm so thankful and so grateful to be part of this. And Rotary's pulled out some of my talents and that I didn't even realize that I had. When I first joined Rotary, I did not realize how big it was. And not only how big it was in our community, I didn't realize some of these things that Rotary does for our community. I didn't even realize it was Rotary that was behind it until I joined the club. And then when I went on vacation and I went to other countries, it was amazing. I went to Jamaica and I saw a Rotary symbol there. And I went to Florida, there's a Rotary group there. <laughs> the, uh, um, it's It was just shocking how big and large this this organization and the whole mentality that same culture of service above self is throughout the world and it gives you that hope for the future pride is the first word that i think of when i think about what this club is doing i'm so proud to be a part of it and there are so many people that do so much what i contribute is minuscule compared to what a lot of people do and I'm just happy to be associated with, with it. And when you see the, the, the things that they're involved in and, and the fundraisers and the things for the community and you know, yeah, I'm part of that group. And Muskegon's getting so much done and, and Rotary's such a huge part of that.